have a, any insight. Some of those balance poses I know can be really tricky. If you're like, it was way too hard, I just want to stretch more, you can totally say that. You don't like downward dog. Why do you think that is? Does it hurt? Yeah, your calves. Just downward dog, yeah. The backs. Yeah, so instead of downward dog, you can do table, or you might kind of be like this if you just bend your knees a lot. Do downward dog. Yeah, so spread your fingers and then lift your hips up higher. Good, come up onto your toes with your heels. Good, yeah, now bend your knees. Good, walk your feet back further. Yes, put your whole palm on the mat. Good, how does that feel? Horrible, okay, just don't do downward dog, just do tables up. Um, anyone else have any like insights or anything you wanna share? Like whatever, yoga. It is what it is. Anyone over here have anything they want to share? Like, is there something more you want to work on? Does it feel like really challenging or just medium, super easy? Okay. So we talked about the eight limbs. It's kind of random. On Thursday, we had a pretty like kind of in-depth discussion a couple of you weren't there and i thought it was recorded and it wasn't the second part so i'm gonna maybe record another one of those for you all um so today we're gonna focus on the fourth limb of yoga does anyone remember what the fourth limb was there's the yamas niyamas the asana which is the posture right and the fourth one Yes, well done, Logan. Yes, breathing, pranayama. So prana means like energy, life force, and yama means to restrain, to control. So controlling our breath. Um, before this pandemic, I used to do a lot of like breathing in through your nose and big sigh out of your mouth. So let it go. Obviously, that's not a smart thing to do with like spit and particles coming out of your mouth uh, right now but just being able to focus on the exhale is really calming so um you know a lot of times like maybe like a teacher or a therapist or a parent will be like take a deep breath in and you'll go so breathing in for your inhale to be longer that um is more like stimulating so if you're feeling like stressed or triggered and you take a longer inhale that'll just like kind of heighten it but a longer inhale is also good if you're feeling like really bored or low or tired. So inhale longer for like more stimulation and lengthen the exhale for more relaxation. I think what most people need right now and in life in general is a longer exhale. So we're gonna do a couple more um, breathing exercises. There are a lot I wanna do that I just don't think are good to do right now in the time of COVID. There's a breathing exercise called alternate nostril breathing where you like block off either side of your nose and think about breathing up and down, but like we shouldn't be touching our faces. There's also a, like a breath of fire where it's like a sharp exhale out of your nose and things fly around. So I think I'm gonna record a short breathing video for you guys to all watch and do on your own um, when you're not like around other people. So just like a lot of ways to pivot. But um, I think if there's like one thing that you might really take away from this semester, it's how to notice, to regulate, and to calm down. At least that's what I really want for you all. I know college is a really stressful time. Um, you know, figuring out what you want to do and adjusting to being away for the first time for a lot of you. And, um, you know, I had really stressful times during college and there wasn't a pandemic going on. So, and the economy wasn't like, and like an election. So you guys all have a lot on your plates, I'm sure. So just having like self-regulating 
um, tools to like tap into so you don't have to like tune out and like binge watch Hulu and like scroll through Instagram and like disassociate and like turn to drugs and alcohol and food and like unhealthy behavior. So that's like my biggest wish for all of you um, to take away from the semester as well as just learning and broadening your mind and really um, figuring out how to think in a different way. So in like a somatic way. So somatic means like with your body, like movement. So like learning through your body. So like somatic therapy is if you're like having a session with your therapist and talking about something really traumatic, maybe just like shaking or breathing. So just like really um, learning things like on a cellular level, like a mind body connection. So today we're just going to do a couple really simple breathing exercises. And you can do this either lying down on your back or sitting up tall. So for some of you, it might feel better to lie on your back, or you can sit nice and tall, cross legs, or varasana the way we just did it. So however you want to practice your breathing right now, either lying down or sitting tall, let's find that position. And then begin by closing your eyes. If you're sitting up, you can place your hands on your legs. And then breathing into any place that might feel tight. So maybe feeling into your shoulders and then relax your shoulders down. And then notice your neck, feel if your neck is a little tight and see if you can breathe into your neck and relax your neck. And then pay attention to your hips. Breathe into your hips and relax your hips. And then feel into your legs, breathe down into your legs, relax your legs. Now, if you're lying down, you can bring your hands on your belly. If you're sitting tall, you can also bring your hands on your belly or just sit tall and think about breathing down into your belly. So belly breath. A lot of us, our breath is kind of high in the chest and shallow. So see if you can make your breath really go down into your low belly, inhale and exhale. Full breath in, full breath out. Keep your breath kind of flowing and pumping down into your low belly. And then move your hands to your ribs through your sides and see if you can send your breath out into your ribs. Inhale and exhale. On your inhale, feel your ribs kind of move to the sides, breath in and breath out. Complete breath in and a full breath out. And now bring your hands up to your chest, kind of right underneath your collarbones and breathe with those three together, so belly, ribs, and chest. Now exhale, chest, ribs, and belly. So deep breaths, inhale, belly, ribs, and into your chest. Exhale the chest, the ribs, the belly. Let your arms come down and then continue to breathe connecting like that. So this is called the three-part breath or Durga breath. Breathe into your belly. Fill up to your ribs, then up to your chest, then exhale the chest, to your ribs, to your belly. Deep breath in, and deep breath out. One more breath in, and breath out. And now everyone come to lie down on your back. Legs extend long, arms come down, if you'd like to stay seated, you can. And again, if this isn't comfortable, you can always bend your knees and place your feet on the ground to active rest. And the next pranayama exercise we're gonna do, breathing exercise, is called square breathing. So you're gonna inhale for the count of four and imagine the first line of a square going up. Hold the breath for four and then exhale down. 
the other edge of the square for four and then hold. So square breathing, matching your inhales, hold, exhale, hold with the shape of a square. So let's begin, get any wiggles out, get comfortable. And now breathe in for one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one. Keep going like that, inhale. Hold. Exhale, four, three, two, one, and hold. Inhale, one, two, three, four, hold. Exhale, four, three, two, one, hold. Last round, breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold the breath. Exhale, four. Let it go. Now take a deep breath in into your entire body. Exhale, completely release, let it all go. And just notice how you feel. So just two simple breathing exercises today. And sometimes just the benefit of one deep breath can be really powerful. Breathing deeply and then letting go. So one more deep breath here and exhale. So next we're gonna transition into a guided relaxation. So a little meditation. So you remember the seventh limb of yoga, dhyana, is meditation. And the eighth limb, samadhi, is absorption. So really letting in. And I just want to share with you um, a little bit of a summary of why meditation and breathing and yoga is all really beneficial. So a summary of the research. Meditation enhances brain function. So when meditating, we create a greater activity in the left prefrontal cortex. So that's the seat of positive emotions and happiness. Reduced activity in the right prefrontal cortex. So that's the seat of negative emotions and anxiety. Produces high amplitude gamma wave synchrony. So expanded awareness, alertness, and insight. Meditation also improves learning and in intellectual capacities, increases production of endorphins, decreases stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. Meditation can be helpful in easing trauma, which studies have shown, especially um, with like the military. Decreased aggression, hostility, and um, division. Helpful in alleviating depression helpful in the treatment of eating disorders, helpful with obsessive compulsive disorders. And gratitude meditations and journaling can contribute to an overall sense of happiness. Meditation can also help our bodily health. So helpful in recovery from cancer. Meditation helps with dealing with chronic pain in recovery from psoriasis. Meditation can help with weight loss and fitness and in alleviating heart problems. And it's been proven and shown in work performance, meditation helps to create less absenteeism, greater cooperation, collaboration, more focused attention on tasks with increased effectiveness and increased job satisfaction. So hopefully that all sounds good. All of the, those facts and informations are backed by peer reviewed science. So. Um, it works. So lie down and start to cultivate a deep breath again. And we're going to do a chakra meditation. So we've talked a little bit about the chakras, so the energy centers in our bodies. So there are seven main chakras in the body. And we're just going to move through 
um, a guided meditation with the colors of the chakras. So you can sit down or you can lie down, which is what I would recommend, and close your eyes. Take a full breath in and let a deep breath out. So start your attention at the base of the spine in your pelvis and your hips and your sacrum. So right at the bottom of your spine. And in that area, bring um, your attention to the color red. So a deep, rich, beautiful red. So this is the muladhara, the root chakra. So see if you can feel almost like a swirling sensation of red into the low hip area. And then move your attention down, down to the legs, the knees, and to the bottom half of the body, the feet, the toes. So the root chakra, which is associated with um, the element of earth. Breathe in and breathe out. Now move your attention up from the base of the spine into the low belly and the pelvis and turn that deep red into a bright orange. So you can almost imagine like a sunset, a really beautiful orange. So this is the second chakra called Svaritsana, which has to do with um, water, mobility, creativity. So feel into your hips, into your sacrum, that water element. Maybe it's a swirling circle of bright orange. Then let that orange color kind of swirl and move and then go up to the very center of your body and turn yellow. A really bright, beautiful sun, yellow. So this is the third chakra called Manipura. The color is yellow and the element is fire. So associated with our digestion. So kind of at the belly button and back to the base of the ribs, a beautiful bright yellow. See if you can even feel like a warm sun right at the middle of your body, softening and relaxing here. Breathing in and letting go. Now let that bright yellow kind of swirl and move and then float up to the center of your chest and turn green. So this is the fourth chakra, the heart chakra, which is called anahata, meaning unstruck. The element of the fourth chakra is air. So feel a bright, almost emerald green color swirling and moving around the center of your chest. And this is a place where maybe some of us feel anxious, tight, tense. So see if you can soften the heart space, the front of the heart and the back. Feel your lungs, your shoulder blades, and up to the collarbones, almost like a, a bright green liquid circling around you, allowing your body to get soft, restful, relaxed. So the heart chakra, love and companionship. Now start to move that bright, beautiful green into a beautiful blue. So it can be like the blue of a beautiful sky or an ocean, maybe a robin's egg blue. And let that blue go all around your throat, your jaw and up to your ears. So this is the fifth chakra, Vishuddha chakra, which means purification. The element associated with the fifth chakra is ether, space. So feel a bright blue here, purification. I speak the truth. Kind of that bridge between our heart and our mind. So that um, gateway to how we can express ourselves. And if the throat feels tight or scratchy, almost imagine like that beautiful blue liquid softening and relaxing you here. Breathing in and letting go. Now from that blue, move up to the place between your forehead, between your eyebrows on your forehead and turn that color into uh, purple. 
a bright indigo or violet. This is the Ajna chakra, the sixth chakra. And you can imagine like a swirling sensation, peaceful, relaxing. The light, the um, element associated with this chakra is light. That place of knowledge, of intuition, remembering that fact that we have everything we need inside of us. That truth and knowledge and trust that we know way more than we might give ourselves credit for. So a beautiful violet, bright purple, all across your forehead. And now move that violet color, that purple, all the way up to the crown of the head, maybe circling around you. And then turn your bright purple into a bright white, almost like an iridescent white color. And then at the top of the head, almost like you have a halo and going a couple inches, sometimes even a foot above your head. So this is the seventh chakra. It's called the Sahasrara chakra, which means a thousand petaled lotus. So the element here is space energy of universal consciousness. The sound is ohm. So this is where all of our elements along the center of our body come to the top and culminate. So this is almost where you connect to something greater than you in the environment, in the um, universe, maybe what you associate with a higher power or God. So relaxing the top of the head and maybe almost feel like an energy around the crown of your head. Take a full breath in and let a big sigh out. The crown chakra, I understand. The third eye chakra, I see. The throat chakra, I speak the heart chakra i love the solar plexus i do the sacral chakra i feel and then into the root chakra i am breathe in and let go and see if you can kind of move your attention from the bottom of the top of this energy center all the points we focused on and notice if you want to kind of pause in one place or the other. Is there one color that you really resonate with? Is there one space that you're feeling? And let yourself kind of be pulled to that area, that place. Soften here, rest, relax. Breathe in, let go. Now gently wiggle your fingers and your toes, roll your ankles and your wrists, turn your head side to side. You can stretch your arms up and your feet down. And then gently draw your knees in, give yourself a squeeze and rock yourself up to a seated position. Lean back up to seated as you sit tall. And just kind of notice how you feel after this almost two hours of yoga, of breathing, of meditation. And see if you can lift through your chest a little and close your eyes and just kind of visualize yourself in, let's say, like three or four months. How are you doing? How do you feel? What's going on? So see if you can imagine yourself in your best self. So who are you in relationship with? What kind of things do you eat and drink every day? What are you wearing? What do you look like when you're really living your best life, when you're your best self? So what would the best case scenario be for your life right now? What are your grades? How are your relationships with your family? Is there something that needs to be healed? Is there something that needs to get let go of? Something needs to release? So take a moment to really invite that in imagining your best self, your best case scenario for your life. So the more that you tell your mind that you think these thoughts, your body might receive this. So, right, like manifesting, like in a couple months, 
I'm going to be super strong and able to run a mile in under eight minutes. And I'm going to be um, eating really healthy every day, not drinking alcohol. And I'm going to have close relationships with my friends and, you know, all the things you really want to create in your life. And then just in a really intentional way, bring your hands at your heart and see if you can kind of really call in that best case scenario, that best person forward, kind of picture them in front of you, breath in, exhale, namaste. So just the way we kind of close the class, light me, sees and honors the light me. All right, great job, you guys. Um, I'm So I'm not gonna, look at your journals. If you guys don't mind taking a picture and sending it to me, I know it's annoying, but I think that's like safer, no contact. Um, yeah, and the journals like casual, they're like your own personal reflection. So um, I, need, I need that by four o'clock today, if you can manage that and your midterm grades will be posted. What's that? Oh yeah, and then an email. I, did you already email me? Okay. Yeah, if you can. So I think this is like our seventh class today. This is our eighth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you should all have like seven journal entries. Is that right? Does that make sense? Okay. Everyone feel good? Any questions? Everyone's good. Okay. I'll see you on Thursday. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So instead of doing like seven individual ones, I can I kind of like combine mine into like weekly journals, but I kind of explained like how each day felt and stuff like that. Okay, I'm sure that's fine. I'll email you. If, yeah. And if I'm, I'm if you're like, that's on me, so that's fine. Okay. Thanks, guys. Must my kitten? Yeah, I do. Where'd she go? Oh, she's hiding. Never mind. Wait, hold up. I bet you can Camera see. Camera shot.